Hey, Config. Woo! Wow, this is huge. Uh, I just want to ask you, anyone knows what the heck is this? No? No worries. I didn't expect any, any answer for, for this. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let's rewind for a sec. Uh, back to the 70s. Uh, you're watching an actual TV ad. So that thing on the screen, it's a Cinex scene. It was born in Barcelona, and yeah, it's red as heck. So kids used to crank that little machine, and boom, movies at home, no screen needed. It's kind of wild, right? Um, now fast forward to today. Um, honestly, holding one of these still feels amazing. I mean, like pure analog glory. But here's the thing also. Um, as I crank, I realize that motion today, it feels like the same. Manual, feeding, really fun, but definitely not scalable in 2025. So that's our jumping uh, off point. So we're going from this cranky little machine to something way cooler, if it's possible, because of this is kind of, let me, this. OK, so to this, a live interactive web playground with arcane heroes actually moving on the screen. Can you hear it? Yeah. So it's built entirely in Figma. Yep, if you're wondering, no After Effects, export this right through Lori, and any way hacks or any custom code, it just lands in production just like that. So, oh yeah, quick intro, I'm Carmen, the sound engineer is a Lori Files, and I love build silly, weird experiments, and sometimes they even survive and go to production. So, in short, I break stuff for a living. That's what I do. And yeah, today we are going to talk about motion, like why we always cut it out and why we need to stop doing that. And I think that motion, honestly, is our favorite playground. We take timings and obsess over timing curves, and yeah, but then the hand of day arrives and hits. And yeah, everything kind of falls apart, right? Uh, feels familiar for someone, yeah? Yeah, sure. Cool. Um, yeah, let's fix that today. So, yeah, probably you've seen this meme before, like the horse one. Yeah, yeah, this is our trauma. I think that the conversation goes like, probably the designer is like, hey, check out this awesome sparkle. And the dev is like, oh my gosh, it's too so heavy, sorry. And PM is like dancing, and yeah, we can skip it. So, and just like that. It's gone. Uh, motion dies uh, in somewhere between Figma and production. So sorry, rest in peace. So, so here, here's the, the, the real talk. I think that designers hand of motion hoping it sticks. And devs are like, oh my gosh, I only have two hours and a heat age, horrible heat age, so I cannot. So what we end up with, as always, with the static screens, I think that this is something that we have, um, we have choice to not into. So motion needs to just work in out of the box. And I will show you how, OK? So the rule, rule number one is uh, you need to show it live. Motion that stays locked in Figma slowly fades down from memory. Uh, probably you have a fancy prototype, but this is still just promises. I think that only code in production keeps your animation alive. So please run it. In the browser, the browser is our friend. So let's people feel it. And that's where the magic is. And the best part that it's totally doable, like today. You know this logo, Figma? Yeah. So your motion flow can go from Figma straight into Lori, and Lori slides right into code. So no way to work around, no duct tape, designer made and developer ready. And yeah, stick with me. I will show you the whole thing. All right, if you are wondering what the heck is dot lorry, <laughs> think of like an SVG, but with feelings. Yeah. It supports states, hover, tap, loops, you know, the, the good stuff. And the file size is always tiny, which is something that devs and also myself love. And that looping love, uh, sorry, that looping doc that you saw earlier, this one, that is like. It's pure dot lorry. So basically, if you know how to drop a link, uh, a div on a page, you can ship motion. 
Um, yeah, this is like the technical part, but for me, Lori, um, it's like the missing piece. Uh, there has always been like a huge awkward gap between design and code, and motion usually fails straight uh, into that gap. So I think that Lori is like, hey, here's a bridge. Now you can connect with your uh, developers, with your repo, with your ideas, and actually make it into production. Cool. So ready to see how the workflow works? Yeah? You've got the idea sketcher out. Um, nice. Uh, it's time to make it move. Um, and seriously, it's just like three steps. I will walk you through one by one, so don't worry. Step one is animating Figma. I think that everyone here uh, have, know how to do this. And step two is obviously export this as a .lory file. And step three is drop it in right into your code. That's it, no secret extra steps, no drama, you've got it. Uh, but before you animate anything, please breathe. Breathe with me. <sighs> Seriously, pause. Uh, you need to define what, ex what exactly you want you to animate, to move, what reacts on hover, what stays chill. So rub the sketch out the whole flow and then open Figma. I think that's the key point. And think also in components. Reusable stuff, not in a kiosk of floating pixels everywhere. And yeah, I will show you what I built for this talk. I want something fun, flashly, totally over the top. So I'm going to grab this um, like Netflix style UI um, with the case of Arcane. Anyone knows Arcane here? Yeah? Yeah, woo! Yeah, thank you. So uh, the file is public on the community, um, Figma community, by the way. So if you want to dive in, remix it, break it, whatever you want to do it. Now it's yours. You're welcome. So <laughs> in this demo, I pick Jin Chan Vai because of come on, it's like an instant cool factor. And also because of they are totally opposites. I mean, Jin is chaos and neon and unpredictable. It's like the perfect playground for create this wild motion. And Vai, I think that she's a complete opposite. Gears, uh, grounded energy, and real talk. If Arcane didn't make you tear up just a little, you need to check your engines. Maybe you are a robot. So let's break down this screen for a sec. Uh, nothing here is aesthetic A candy. Every element that you see it's, uh, has its own component. So you see this lightning, lightning in the background. It's a separate component. That endless gear loop on by, also another component. Even Gene's Chaos it has its own layer. It's all animated inside Figma. And the Lorifiles plugin shows you exactly what's going to ship. So more glow and, yeah, less web work. OK, uh, step one is easily the most fun. Uh, as you know, animate everything directly in Figma. You can use Byron's and Smart Animate to do the heavy lifting. And yeah, sprinkle components everywhere. Yeah. Then I think that my advice is don't just design things uh, how it looks, design how they feel. And here's a little example. Um, see this little emblem? It's just a boring flat vector at first, but watch what happens if you give it some love. So I think that it starts looping like it means business. So here's what I did. First, I turned that into a proper component. Then I draw just four little frames, each with uh, showing a bit of the spin. It's super simple. You know how to do this. Uh, I remember when I was a kid and think like a flip book. So that's the same, but digital and crisp. And yeah, I, that's your base. That's your motion set. And yeah, then I took it each frame inside the component. It's like every rotation. And Smart Animate does the hard part. It fills the in between. I threw in a spicy custom cure for the timing. And yeah, boom, instant loader prototype. It's the only thing that you need. I think that the whole thing took me like, I don't know, five minutes probably. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you are wondering about images, still images, they can move too. I mean, no skeletons, you don't need any 3D ring fancy stuff. Even a basic WebP file like this can join the party. I mean, you just need to get creative with it, and yeah, it's dancing. Here's a glow trick that is uh, just uh, stupid simple, sorry, but it works. I mean, you just need to take two vector shapes, literally just silhouettes. And, some blur and a slab, uh, like a screen blend mode on top. And yeah, neon, it's on. 
So you just need to stack that glow behind the characters. And suddenly, I think that it's like dev drama, totally 80s vibes and energy. Uh, yeah, it, it's giving me like movie poster vibes, and yeah, I love it. So yeah, this is the fir first part done. All the motion lives in Figma right now. Uh, Smart Animate and Components did their job. Uh, I think that it's time for export that beauty. OK? Um, yeah, so please forget about After Effects now. Forget about timelines. Forget about keyframes, uh, pain, all of these things. We're staying inside Figma, so powered by the Lorifiles plugin. The whole flow takes like five seconds, I swear. It's very simple. You need to open the Figma uh, plugin in Figma, uh, pick your star frame, hit export to Lori, and that's it. You've got a dot Lori file ready to go anywhere. Same thing with that. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing, but the Dino loader, uh, loader, sketch your frame, smart animate, the transitions, export as a .lori file, and here's the twist. Now you are the pipeline. I mean, from prototype to production in just one click. And honestly, feels kind of chill. And step three, time to drop it into code. So you got your .lori file, sweet. Now we head to the depth zone. I know that this can be sound scary for don't, don't be scary. I mean, don't worry. It's way easier than you think. So that's for devs, OK? Any dev here? Yeah, thank you. So you open Visual Studio Code, full of hope. <laughs> and the screen starts just back at you like this, blank, no instructions, no ready for dev, anything. I think this is a classic, but hey. Deep breath again with me. I've been there too, but uh, let me show you my actual workflow that it works. Yeah. This is where I lean on um, all the Lorifiles workflow. It's like a little motion cloud that I carry with me everywhere. So every dot lorry that, that I export from Figma lands there. It's a clean version, shareable. So one click and everyone's in your team is in sync. No more final, final, v3 for real this time, file, chaos. Uh, you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> so yeah, remember that Dino Loader? It's same floor, SVG, Smart Animate, Export, boom. But here's the real win. Handoff basically disappears. I mean, the file is host on a CDN version ready to embed. You're not digging through Slack messages anymore. You just need to copy this link or the code, uh, or the code, just this tiny snippet, and paste it on your code. No timelines, no keyframes to wrangle it, hit, save, done. Seriously, that easy. If you want to see in action, you can drop this small snippet into CodePen or whatever sandbox you want. No build a step, no config drama. It's just one link, one animation working. And yeah, if anyone asks you, where is the motion? Now, right there, it's here. So, now, I know that visuals, static visuals are cute, I know, but interactive motion, I think that this is where, that's where the fun begins. And this is like the bonus round after the step three, okay? So we can make this thing reactive. Okay, so under the hood, I'm using Dot Lorry with React. It's super light, barely any setup, uh, no webpack. Nightmares, uh, I promise. So installation is a brief. You only need to install the dependency, npm install. That's it. Uh, you're ready to roll. And if you want to pick under the hood, uh, everything is neatly, and the project is organized in source. So you've got your splash screen, your animation folder, your character UI, even share of your logic. It's all modular, clean. It's super easy to debug. I mean, if you do break something, you will know exactly where go to cry. <laughs> <laughs> One little trick I love, uh, this splash screen has a safety net. I mean, if the animation doesn't finish in time, after three seconds, uh, it just skips. Uh, but if the animation uh, does finish on time, yeah, we listen for that event and fade out the splash screen out nice and smooth. Right. So the whole UI is built in three layers, background layer, character layer, and lightning layer. I think it's total modular, super clean. And that middle layer is the character. So in, in, when you hover in, it gently zooms in uh, towards you. It's just a little scale up, but this is more detail. Uh, adds a lot of much depth. So make it feel alive, the character. And the top layer is pure lining effects. 
uh, it has its own .lory file looping nonstop. And yeah, if you're wondering how to create this um, character, uh, the character themselves lives in these tiny JSON objects, uh, things like name, title, image. Um, it's all back inside of one clean little file. Um, I think that it's, it's very clean. And if you want to add another character, a new one, you just need to create a new JSON, same format, not touching core code. Uh, it's, so, it's so clean. Um, yeah, for quick stuff, if you're wondering how I animated the like hover fades, color tweaks, UI transitions. I use Framer Motion. It's one tiny library, super flexible. It's perfect for all of the UI sprinkles. But for the heavy stuff like the burst or looping effects, uh, Lottie handles all, all of these like a champ. So you just need to export that effect as a dollar file and you're done. And yeah, quick reality check. I know that you probably know, but hover is totally dead on mobile. So the code checks the device at runtime. And if it's a touch screen, uh, we swap hover to tap or autoplay. So I think that that way motion still feels right. Uh, no way surprises for your thumbs. And yeah, to keep it clean, when you hover in, the lightning keeps off and pulses. And when you hover out, we clean it up. No memory leaks. So time to see again the live demo. Let's see it brief. So everything is modular, interactive, alive. And hey, if you are like me, and hate waiting, <laughs> I added a cheek um, little slider on the bottom right, so you can just jump between characters. You don't need to, to wait for it. And yeah, all right, let's wrap it up with some hard earned lessons that some stuff I really wish someone had told me back on day one. So if your animation were an onion, layers are the skin. So plan them early. If you don't, you will cry later. Trust me. like. Real onion tears. <laughs> so probably hard coding feels like fast until you have to change the same thing in 12 different files. So please use data structures. And probably um, it looks battery smooth in your M4 new MacBook, <laughs> right? But on other phones, it's light show mode probably. So test early, test on real devices also. And as I told you, hover is awesome until you touch a screen. So then it's gone. So yeah, design interactions that adapt. If you don't, your, your shiny motion just will vanish into the void. And yes, yeah, Sony says sparkle on your cupcake. Uh, it's totally optional, but really effective. But just keep it mute by default and let the user the control. Because of accessibility is first, the light is second. And the real magic move, stop loving the files over the wall. Co-create from day one, please. So motion is not just a handoff. I think that motion is a jamming session. And also, it's just it's just, and just a decoration. It's the experience. So cutting out, I think that God's the soul of your product. So it's time to stop snipping the fun stuff. I'll, let's ship motion. And uh, yeah, before I roll out, I just two, two quick shout outs. So jamming, because of your feedback was razor sharp, and also Kelly. Uh, Kelly, it's been my behind the scenes wizard in all of the demo recordings. So I know that this wasn't shy without you both. So thank you, folks. And if you want to play with the full example, code, animations, Figma file, everything's bundled up uh, for you. You just can scan the QR or click the link, this one. Yeah, you can remix it, break it. I mean, steal the good bits. I don't mind. Let's keep. I just mind that I don't want to keep the sign and code besties forever. So that's all. Muchas gracias. 